Hello, and welcome to the People Purpose Podcast, the show that explores all the ins and outs of the challenges and opportunities HR, people managers, and all people face at work every day. My name is Julie Devlin, and I am here with my lovely co-host. <laughs> Jess Fields. <laughs> hey, Jules. Not many people would call you lovely except for uh, me, Jess. I hope my wife would, right? <laughs> wife would. I don't know. I've talked to her, too. But... <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's, it's a, it, yeah. Oh, um, Chaz, uh, let's start out the show like we always start out the show and tell me something good. Jules, uh, we were together last week and you came down and saw me. I, I, I did. It, yeah. I did. It was this, nice. I had something good too. Um, no. Cause yeah, I got to Sorry. see you, which, you know, we see each other a lot, but, <laughs> but never really in my neck of the woods. You know, right. I live, I live in the Maryland suburbs and um, we got to go to DC and yeah. we talked to about a hundred people too, which is really, really cool. I don't know if that was awesome. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and yeah, Chaz, I drove down there to see you and um, gas is expensive. So you should be, well, should be you should have taken the train. Well, <laughs> uh, well, I still have to drive to the train, Chaz. I'm, to to I'm, the not, train. I'm not, Julie, I'm not reimbursing you for your fuel. Oh, oh, so what, like, what do you want me to say in this? That's segment? what you think. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, but it's always good to see you. And, you know, you and I, uh, we have a lot of fun when we're together and we get a lot of business done too, which is good. So yeah, we do work. It's not all play, right? It's not uh, all play. That's right. That's Jules, right. What are we, what's the business out of the day? <sighs> Jess, why don't we jump right into it? Like, <laughs> that's right. We're, we're here. Okay. We're here. I know people aren't here to hear us talk back and forth or, <laughs> or are they? So, all right, let's talk about the business side of the day. And I, I like this one. So there is a Gallup poll uh, that we found, and it says that large companies have approximately one manager for every 10 employees. But what this Gallup poll found is that one in t- only one in 10 people possess the inherent talent to actually manage. So here's the thing, Chaz, when you do the math, like it, the chances are, that person, the, no, that person on the team may not be the one who can actually manage. That was such a very polite and HR way of saying it. <laughs> I have so many comments, right? Like I have so many comments. It's actually a great stat of what we're going to talk about today. But but my first comment is like, what are we doing to qualify that individual as a, as a, has a manager capabilities? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and <laughs> that, that, that really does hurt company odds. How, you know, to, to, to produce a quality experience for people who aren't managers, right? Like it, it really does hurt those odds, but at the same time gives a huge opportunity to, to develop people, right? Yeah. Like there's, there's a really, really critical piece there. And I, wow. Like when, when we shared that stat, the, you know, what, when we did this yesterday or when we uh, put this together, it was just kind of like, oh man, you know, what could we do to really make a difference in this instance? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, when you do the math, it's likely that someone on each team actually has the talent to lead. Mm -hmm. But the question is, is that person the actual manager? Like how, how are we finding, if we're saying that there's all these folks out of one out of 10 people has the talent, how do we actually identify those people. Mm -hmm. And I think this conversation is so important right now, especially um, with with the hiring environment, with the work environment, and how how important it is for managers uh, to the employee experience. Because, you know, people don't leave jobs, they tend to leave managers, um, and they tend to leave their bosses. And it's very meme like of you, by the way meme like yeah yeah like you see all the memes on linkedin where it's like people don't leave their job they leave their manager it's like "Eh, there's probably (laughs) some more things to that but that's probably a pretty good foundational source too yeah yeah i mean i i think there's a lot of truth to that oh absolutely 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 that's actually a really good segue because today jules we're going to talk about something that will impact everyone everyone it will impact everyone uh, more importantly, how this idea of managing up or managing down. So you may uh, think, oh, what is managing up? We know what managing down is, right? Like we we know if you are a manager, you manage your people, you manage down. But the, the question is, what if you're not a manager? Mm-hmm. And more importantly, you have a bad manager or a good manager, but there are ways that you can improve 
what they're doing for for others, right? So we we call that managing up. So um, just a couple of key highlights to this. The first piece is if you're trying to manage up. Now, Julie, I've been in manager roles, but I've also been in individual contributor roles in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the critical pieces of this is really understanding when managing up, you have to understand the overall team goals and then take it a step further. What are your manager's goals? Okay. And then the piece when you manage up, no, you're not technically managing per se in the in the sense of what a manager when managing down is but the idea when you're trying to manage up is we've got to work together to achieve the goals collectively and hopefully making not only the job easier for yourself but easier for your manager and making it easier for the rest of your team does that make sense yeah i wanted to ask you though because you have been in these roles and i've, I've yeah. managed as well i think yeah. you've had more experience in actual management you know um what does managing up truly mean to you wow yeah that's a, it's a, a yeah so so for me i think the the goal overall is as an let's say it's an individual you know in this instance we're talking about individual contributor mm-hmm. for me the overall goal is going to be achieving personal team manager goal and most importantly business objective right so like we have mbos but i think about team mbos and what that looks like mm-hmm. and and it's the idea of being more efficient more effective and being a really, really good team player. I know that's very, very, very cliche. No, right? it's not. It's not because I, it, or, okay. Yeah. It's cliche. You know, we, always yeah, it, it, you right. Have be, you have to be a good team player, mm-hmm. you know, but in order to get business done, it's critical. It's absolutely yeah. critical, especially in this environment where so many of us are remote. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's very easy to get isolated. Um, and to just do things on your own in, in mm-hmm. some instances. And I think that <clears throat> that whole concept of teamwork and being a team player and, you know, really having the mentality of what's best for the team mm-hmm. is the way that forward thinking organizations are, are moving toward or we're staying with. Yeah, there's got to be there's got to be a good balance of being a team player and, and being selfish in a sense of your personal growth. Right. Sure. Like at work or even individually, right? That's where it's hard is how do I as an individual not be too selfish and be a good team player, right? Because if you're too selfish, you're probably not being a good team player. Yeah, but let's talk about being selfish. And I, I always, you know, I always hear that word and, and yeah. that word has a negative connotation. Right. But, That's where I was going. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah but we can't keep it that way. No. Yes, there's the, there's the sense of being selfish in the in the way of, oh, I'm, I'm only for myself, you know, yeah. but it's okay to yeah. want the best for yourself. Yeah. To be selfish. And right. Want the best for yourself and, and move and make moves and, you know, not to the detriment of other people. Right. Know, that's the key. You. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the key. I think also when it comes to managing up to, there really is this anticipation of removing roadblocks for managers. Mm-hmm. So there is some selfless behavior, right? Removing those roadblocks and um, the same way that that manager should be removing the roadblocks for you. I think where it gets really, really hard to manage up and maintain a positive attitude is when it's not a two-way street, right? It's like, I am doing all of this only for my manager and there's no positive outlook or anything that's helping me other than, oh, you're just doing your job. Right. Yeah. And, and there's, so that's where it gets kind of difficult. I also think when it comes to managing up, we really, really have to understand how to navigate what making your manager to, to look successful looks like. Right. right? And you also have to want to make your manager look. That's successful. exactly. That, that's, yeah. that's right. So, so again, you're hired to do a job, right. Yeah. But we also want to keep growing. And, and so yeah. often when we want to keep growing, it's, well, am I being too selfish? Am I not being selfish enough? Am I being a team player? Am I not being a team player? Does my manager like me because I, I'm doing enough or I'm not doing enough? One of the key things, and I know you do this too, Julie, in, in my one-on-one conversations, um, like with Teresa and Chris, and is what could I be doing better? What could I do to make your life easier? Yeah. And then if it's something that is reachable, then we have that discussion. Okay, let me take that. I'll go do it. If it's something that I'm just like, I don't have time for, or I can't, 
then it's also being transparent and having a safe place to say, Hey guys, like that's not going to make it this month or whatever. Yeah, but think, about, think about the importance of that. Okay. And sure. There's so many of us, well, there's so many employees, I think that mm-hmm. wouldn't ask that question because this is a great segue into our sort of our second point here. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, you know, you genuinely want to help them yeah. be successful because, sure. you know, our success is their success. Their success is the team's success. The team's right. success is the business success. That's right. That's right. And, and that's the ultimate goal. You know, we talk yeah. a lot about how uh, we want to have a sense of belonging at work. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. you know, organizations that have this sense of belonging, they have their individuals they come, they, uh, they rally around a, a common goal, right? Yeah. To improve the business. Now, again, that's not to the detriment of individuals, sure. but, but it's still something that all of us are striving to do. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know, this, all of that really comes down to one thing and we can talk about pitfalls of managing up in the wrong way. I think trust is really a key factor. And, You know, if you remember in other episodes, we've talked a lot about trust. Um, We've mentioned the trust uh, survey. Um, I think we can probably drop a link to that as well Mm -hmm. for for those of you who aren't familiar with it. But really, you know, my bread and butter, Chaz, the psychological contract is really the foundation of of this, of trust, right? That exchange relationship between the employee and the uh, employer and between the manager and the employee. Um, And is that relationship being upheld um, in terms of expectations being uh, whatever is promised, you know, Um, making sure that uh, it's being delivered upon? Yeah. I think the idea when you're managing up in the wrong way, obviously trust is a factor. And if there's, if there's no trust, there's a lot of ways. The big question I ask is when you're managing up, is the behavior you're enacting or enabling, is it going to ruin your reputation? Right. Mm-hmm. I think it, so in other words, all right. Uh, you know, are you actually accomplishing anything when you're trying to manage up? Are you just trying to climb the corporate ladder and maneuver and, and be political in every action that you make or don't, which by the way, we need to do a, a a corporate politics episode is really, really good. Right. We know they exist, but nobody likes to talk about them. Right. Um, (laughs) Corporate politics episode. uh, Now you're really getting into it. Yeah. It it will get real thick. Um, (laughs) But the, the other piece of this too, is you got to think about when you're managing up, is it going to sabotage your other relationships? Right. So if you're managing up, you really do have to take a lot of the ego out of it. Right. True. And a lot of times when, uh, when people think about managing up, they think about sucking up. Right. Right. Think about, uh, oh, they're brown noser, you know, they're just trying to, you know, get into the good graces or whatever. And I don't think that's necessarily true. But, you know, if you have people that think that, that's a larger organizational culture issue. Yeah. It can be threatening, right? It can be super, super threatening. 100%. 100%. And yeah, corporate politics, they definitely are there. Um, But, uh, you know, I think that um, when we talk about, you know, managing up and, and, and all of this, we need to be really clear about the job that we ourselves were hired to do and mm-hmm. do that job. Right. Yeah. Um, we need to make sure that, uh, you know, we're not overstepping our, sure. our bounds. Um, but like you said, we need to also make sure that we're helping wherever we can and allowing ourselves to grow, not just for the better, betterment of us, but for the betterment of the team and our manager. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's really important. I knew, I knew somebody that, um, in an, in an old job, not, not here at UKG, but in an old job that, um, it was positioned or often portrayed as they were sucking up. Mm-hmm. And the the hard part about that is it gave everyone a false sense of belief about that person, because as you got to know them, you're like, wow, like you really are a genuine person, right? So it, I, essentially we need to change our perception that people actually are genuinely good and yeah. that if they are being proactive and trying to make everyone's life easier or make the manager's life easier, we shouldn't be pointing fingers saying, oh, you're wrong for this and I'm better than you because I'm not doing that, right? Yeah. And that's, that's, where, that's where it's really, really hard and you've got to take the ego out of it because at the same time, that individual who's doing the complaining and pointing the finger saying, bah, you know, woe is me could also be doing the exact same thing to make the team and the manager's life easier. They're just actively choosing not to. 
right? Yeah. And, and when it all boils down, you know, what all of this boils down to is that it's about relationships. Yeah. It's about relationships and gosh, we could simplify work, right? Mm-hmm. We can simplify it and just look at all how work, the entire thing is just one big relationship and right. all the, all the uh, pieces of, of what makes a good relationship and just plug it into the work situation. Sure. It's not that easy. Um, but you know, I think that, um, managing up, I think that it really helps, um, individuals grow. Sure. Um, yeah. It helps them grow and it thus can help, you know, organizations get more resources that they need to mm-hmm. get things done. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, people can grow in their position. They can uh, achieve new skills, you know, think about the business side of the day. Maybe we realize, you know, somebody has more leadership capability than we thought. Yeah. Instead of having one, let's get that up to two, three, four. Anything is better than one, right? You know, at the, in that situation. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, Yeah. I I think that what, you know, managing, manage, management itself (laughs) is such a complicated thing and relationships themselves are extraordinarily complicated. So when you have a manager who has an entire team and has into each individual with their own sort of agenda or their sure. own career aspirations, right? And each individual basically acting differently in terms of how how they interact with the manager, right? That's not easy for managers, right? I mean, I, sometimes we don't we don't talk about that enough. You know, we talk a lot about how managers. Uh, how managers should treat employees, but how about how employees should treat managers? Whoa, there's an episode, Chaz. <laughs> that's actually great because I think we that's that leads us into this really the next point. But before we get to you know the the best way to manage down, or at least in our opinion, the best way to manage down, like do you think generically speaking that managers just have a bad rep, like a bad reputation, like the term manager? Yeah. Cool. And the broad yeah. spectrum. Yeah. 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 And I think pop culture helps with that. Sure. You know, I mean, managers in, in movies and the office, right? I mean, yeah. you know, oh, the manager's the big bad manager, the one who tells me what I have to do, the boss. You're always hard on everybody. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, and it's not always that way. It's, it's actually rarely that way for, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's partly why a lot of organizations have gotten away from the term. A lot of organizations, yeah. you know, team leader. Mm -hmm. or, you know, director, or, Mm -hmm. you know, like, uh, there's a million different terms um, Mm -hmm. that can be utilized. It's the same way with HR, you know, uh, director of HR. Now it's, you know, director of people happiness, and you know, that kind of that kind of thing. So yeah, no, I do think managers get a bad rap. Um, Now, that's not to say that some of them don't maybe deserve it. um, But really, what it boils down to is that all of us are human. And as employees, we need to remember that about our managers as well. Just because they have the title doesn't necessarily mean that they're superhuman and they're going to fix everything uh, with one, in one fell swoop, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So, but that is a, a good sort of segue, Chaz, into, into, our next, um, into our next topic, right? So we talked about managing up. What about managing down, right? So I think managing down really, we need to focus on working towards that mutual goal, right? right. Goals need to be clear and we ha- there needs to be expectations that managers set for their employees and the employees need to know what those expectations are and how they can achieve them. And they need to have the tools to be able to achieve them. I think that's important as well. Yeah, I, I, as you work towards that mutual goal, it then becomes about accountability, right? And I think that often gets a a bad rap too, where we have a lot of sensitivities just in general when people tell us what to do if it's not on our agenda. Again, removing some of the ego out of that, right? Yeah. The the other piece of that is if, if you're not hitting a goal or a deadline or managing a project or whatever it is, not doing your job well. And it, and it, it comes with accountability. Right. And we use this as like, we, we, we feel bad or we feel threatened when someone tells us, Hey, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Right. Well, yes, I am. That, right. You and, mean, and, how do you know I'm working hard? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's like, actually, but you're not hitting the goal we set out to achieve or even moving towards that goal. Right. So, right, so, yeah. so there has to be some self-acceptance here where it's okay. My manager who clearly 
has been put in this position because they were for whatever reason. However, they're still trying to drive the goal for the company because their boss is saying, why aren't you doing it? Right. Yeah. Like it, 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 it all kind of collectively works together. But I think a critical piece of this is that continuous learning and education when it comes to managing down, mm -hmm. isn't just role specific, like it's for everyone. Mm -hmm. And and one of the critical pieces for managers to be a great manager is really understanding that team dynamic, what objective they're trying to achieve personally. And, you know, hey, are you really being proactive to help make positive change in that individual contributor's life? Yeah, right? we don't have to get into the whole people being promoted to management because they're good at their job. Um, that's, <laughs> that's another episode. <laughs> that is another episode, but I think that has a lot to do with yeah. some of this, these concepts. There are a lot of people that are very good at their job. Yeah. Just because you're good at your job does not make you a good manager because of those relationships, because of the, the, the dynamics that are involved, because of all of the, the business acumen that one sure. has to have. Sure. Um, but not just business acumen, people acumen. <laughs> right. Right, right, yeah. right. Some emotional intelligence there too. I remember that, you know, when you come to being proactive and managing down, there's a major, major humility aspect that comes with this, right? As a manager, uh, there was one time I, I remember this, like it was yesterday in a, in a former job that I was, I was the super happy, you know, wanted to make sure everyone knew what I had to say. And I had someone come up to me and just be like, Hey, uh, you're not the smartest person in the room. And oh. it wasn't, it wasn't that I was trying to be the smartest person in the room, but that's the way it was perceived. Right. Wow. And I had to quickly learn how to use the resources around me not to come across in a way that is perceived negatively because all that is is hurting the team it's hurting the team goals it's hurting the team dynamics and i quickly had to learn okay what does everyone around me know and the resources that they have so we can start leveraging it and really working together and listening to the team who had been in the industry longer than i had been alive Right. So you were giving the you were giving the impression whether or not it was true or not right. that you knew it all. Yep. Um, and you, yeah, you yep. in a room with people who were much older and more experienced than yep. you. So say okay. less, mean more. Say yeah. less, mean more. Yeah, right. But, that, but that's interesting because everybody's perspective is unique to them. Is right? It right? But but the difference is in that moment. Uh, I didn't have the the learning and education at the time to to really take a step back and and say, man, I say less mean more, right? Like that's yeah. and ever since that meeting, I kid you not, that's the mantra I try and live by is say less mean more, specifically in this type of meeting, because it was an executive leadership meeting and I just happened to be invited. I wasn't in that position, but I just happened to be invited. Yeah. And it was like, oh, okay. And it, and and here's the deal. I had the opportunity. Um, from someone who was managing down to to feel threatened, but it was a level in their mind, a level of accountability where if I take my ego out of it, I really can fast track my career here working with the team and the team dynamics and, and move forward, right? So just a little snippet for those, right, that are, that are listening. There's a, there's a lot that you can learn that may not necessarily be book learning or a continuing ed, but just understanding how different people react, going back to what you said, Jules, and that relationship piece. Right. And knowing that you can't control how people perceive you, right. but it's actually helpful to know how you're being perceived. Yeah. Um, because you may think you're coming off one way, sort of like you That's right. did. Yep. And you may be being perceived in a completely separate way. But I think it's interesting that you still remember that story like it's yesterday. Oh, oh man, and, this was a long time ago, too. It really, it really, it really cut you to your core. Yeah. You, were, you, were, you, were, you were humbled, Chaz. Uh, yeah, I was humbled real yeah, quick. Yeah, uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, please understand there was a day Chaz Fields was humble. <laughs> Here we go. I'm just kidding. Here I'm just kidding. You, you are, Chaz, you are among the most humble oh, people. Stop. Oh, stop. Now we're just You're right. I'll stop. I'll stop. So, okay. um, hey, Jules. <laughs> you say, well, it kind of wraps us up today. So, uh, hey, Jules, what, you know, this is obviously a great conversation. We could probably pull five or six more episodes just out of our yeah. conversations, right? Uh, what would you find your purpose in today? Well, my purpose uh, today, what did I find my purpose in? I think that managing up, managing down, it's truly about understanding 
the relationship and the perceptions of the individual people who you're working with Mm -hmm. and recognizing that those people, you may have a hundred people you work with and a hundred different perceptions. Mm. And, (laughs) and I think that that is a, a large challenge, but also an opportunity for managers as well. Sure. Sure. I think generally speaking that managing up is not a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Right. Like managing up is not a bad thing. I think when, when for me, finding the purpose is more about being okay with being held accountable, holding each other accountable and being okay, having a conversation with a manager saying, this is feasible, this is not. And even though it may not be the answer that that manager wants or likes, there's a lot of good that can come from that. And you are managing up, even though you don't have people who, um, you know, sit, uh, below you on the hierarchy. So I think that's a really, really critical piece. So, uh, Jules, I think that's it. You want to bring us home or you want me to, I can do it. Okay. I, can, I mean, I, I open the show and I can close the show. I love it. That's perfect. <laughs> well, don't forget to like, and subscribe, um, and use the hashtag people purpose pod on sites like LinkedIn and, uh, Twitter. And also Chaz, Make sure you check out the workforceinstitute.org for all the latest research. Awesome. I think that's it, Jules. We'll see y'all soon. Cheers, y'all.